Hi, and welcome to my maths class. Today we are going to discuss Theorem of Pythagoras. We are actually going to do a bit of revision of grade 9 work. When we have a triangle with a 90 degree angle, then we know that the side opposite the 90 degrees is called our hypotenuse. If we want to calculate sides by using what is given, So if I've got that AB is 6 and BC is 8, then to calculate the hypotenuse, I'm going to use the theorem of Pythagoras. X squared plus Y squared is equal to R squared. Now when you're using the theorem of Pythagoras, it doesn't matter if you make BCX and ABY or if you use it the other way around. What is important is that the H or the R is always on its own. So we have 64 plus 36 is equal to R squared. R squared is equal to 100. R is equal to 10. Now when you're doing Pythagoras, we're always going to have a positive for R. Because R is created by two positives. So R is always going to be a positive. We're never going to put plus or minus. When you're using Pythagoras or we're working with lens, then we would just use a positive version. Okay, let us change the question slightly. Now, when you look at your Pythagoras, what you must remember is that the side opposite the 90 degree is always alone, which means the R squared is going to be linked to the 13. The sides that are not opposite the 90 degrees are going to be added together. Now, since we only have one side, we are required to calculate the other side. So the best thing or the easiest way to remember is the two sides that touch the 90 degree angle is always together. And the side that is not touching the 90 degree angle is always alone. Like if you look at this, we put six and x together because they were both touching the 90 degree. Now let's substitute what we have. We have a 12 squared plus, we don't know the other side, is equal to 13 squared. Now we're going to use our methods of solving for x or solving for an unknown. So we have y squared is equal to 169 minus 144. 12 squared is 144, we're taking it over. 13 squared is equal to 169. So we have y squared is equal to 25, y is equal to 5. Now when we're using a square function, we would usually say y is equal to plus or minus 5. But because we are working with distance, we say y is equal to 5. Now, you must be comfortable with your Pythagoras. You must understand when and where do I substitute what I need. The next thing we need to know is how do we name our sides and our angles. If I give you a triangle, what we must remember is that sides usually have two alphabets. So in this case, if I wanted the line on this side of the triangle, I would call it AB. Likewise, we would have had AC and BC. Now, this is the way we name our lines. But how do we name our angles? If we are talking about our angle, 
If it's a single angle, we can simply say A. Or if we're working with B, we could say B, or we could simply say C. But that is because the angle is singular. There's no other angle at A. So you could get away with simply naming it on a single value. Okay, if you take the following triangle, with B, it is still a singular angle. And so is the same with C. If you look at D and A, you will notice that there are two angles at those places. So you can no longer name it A or D. You have to be more specific. Now either you're going to name the angle with its number, so it's A2, or you read the angle <clears throat> by creating a value with the two lines that are making the angle. So in this case, if I wanted A2, I would name it B, A, D. So what happens is the two lines that are creating the angle is on the side of the angle and the angle we are talking of is in the middle. So we have B, A, D. So we can call it A2 or we can call it B, A, D. How we got the B and the D? They are the two lines that create the angle. So we got B, A, D. If I wanted A1, then it would be D, A, C. Before you go on with your grade 10 work, you must know basic things like how to name a line, how to name an angle. Then would you be okay. Also, Pythagoras is an important part in your grade 10 trigonometry. Thank you for watching.